In this video, I'll demonstrate the Data Load tool. To provide some context as I do so, I'll walk through a sample business case. This is based on a notional streaming video business named Oracle Movie Stream. Within this business, I'll be playing the role of a departmental analyst. I've just been assigned a new mission by my boss. Look into the data for Q2 of last year to help us plan the new campaign. To support this analysis, I've been given an extract of consumption data from last year. The first step for the movie stream analyst, as for most analysts, is to load data. Load or access data from local files or remote databases? Yes. First we say what we want to do with the data. Load it into our ADB, leave it in place and access it remotely. Or set up a live feed. Then say where it is. A file on the local machine, in another database, or stored in a cloud somewhere. We set up access to those cloud locations here. This card allows me to inspect the data in my ADB. Let's start by loading some data from my local machine. We simply drag and drop the files here. These are the three files that we want to load. Three files, which give us four cards. There's a card for file countries and another for file devices. And here we see two cards for file days months. One will load a table called months and the other will load a table called days. You see, days months is an Excel file with two tabs, one for days, one for months. Each tab loads a separate table. Let's look at the properties for the countries card. This is a comma separated value, CSV file. And we have a nice default value for the target table name. We have various options here. Create a new table. Insert into an existing table. Replace the data in a table. Recreate a table. Merge data into a table. In this case, we want to create a new table. The column mappings seem reasonable. Here, we can preview the data we're about to load. Let's bump this up to show 100 rows. It's a nice simple table of countries within consonants. So, with a simple gesture, we've set up a single load of data from three files of different types into four target tables. Nice and easy. Let's run the job. The green check marks indicate that all four tables were created successfully. These are small tables and it was very quick. Looking into the details for devices, we can now look at the target, the table we've just created, and we see the simple hierarchy of the specific devices on which movies are watched within the broader category of form factor. Okay. Next, we're going to load a bigger file, this time from cloud storage. First, we need to set up access to this cloud storage location. We don't have any of these yet, so we have to add a new one. Let's call it Movie Sales. We specify the URI for the cloud storage location here. Paste that in. This one is a public bucket with no credential required. Now we see the card for this cloud storage location. We're now ready to load data from there. So we say load data from cloud storage. And here we see, within this cloud storage location, the files that are present there. This is the one we want, Movie Sales 2020. Drag this over here to load it. Let's look at its properties. As before, we have a good default table name based on the file name. This is a CSV file. And again, this is an initial load, so create table is the right choice here. The column names seem good. I just want to go there and click that. Let's run this job. This is a bigger file. It's got about half a million rows in it. So we get a sense of progress as the job executes. 
Okay. So that took about 15 seconds. Not bad. Let's take a look. We pop out to the data load main page and click this explore card to inspect the data that we've just loaded. Here are the four tables we loaded from three local files. Here are a couple of instrumentation tables created in case we need to view details of the data load. I want to look at this one, Movie Sales 2020. Here we're looking at the data in the so-called fact table that we just created. We see data across various dimensions, geography, time, movie genre, customer segment, viewing device. Here are the measures, sales in dollars and cents, and individual purchase events. I want to show you the statistics, which I find are very helpful for quickly understanding the structure and content of the table. For example, we click on day, and we see that there are 14 distinct values. That doesn't sound right. Rolling my mouse across the histogram below, we can see the problem. Some values are in uppercase, and others are in title case. That's a data quality problem that needs to be fixed. Let's take a note of that. Here for months, there are 12, which is OK on a calendar. However, our specific task here involves analyzing data for quarter two, April, May, and June. So we need to filter out the data for the other nine months. So let's make a mental note. We need to correct the values for the days of the week. We need to filter out the months outside Q2. Now we return to the Database Actions main page. So what have we seen here? In a few short minutes, we've loaded data both from files of various types and from multiple locations. We've quickly scanned that data and identified some problems that need to be addressed. We'll do that next.